Hello everybody, it is July 12th. I'm Troy Deitmeyer, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northeast Iowa and been getting a lot of phone calls here on fungicide application on corn. I just wanted to go over a few things that we've learned over the past several years with our testing. Since 2012, Pioneer has been doing extensive testing on specific hybrids and how, how they respond to fungicide individually. And there's some things that we see practically year in, year out that I just hopefully will help you guys make a little bit better decision on what acres can give you the best chance of making a return on your investment when it comes to fungicide. One of the things that we've consistently seen is that our full season products, 105, 106 plus day CRM maturities, typically give us the biggest response year in, year out. So that's kind of where I would start. I would start at my full season corn and then kind of work backwards. Another thing that we have seen consistently is that your corn on corn acres will typically give you a profitable yield response. So if we look at the last six to seven years of our fungicide data, corn on corn typically can give us uh, right around eight to 11 bushels is what we've been averaging, obviously some years more than others. So that eight to 10 bushels per year average versus corn on soybeans is a lot more hit and miss. Uh, some years we see almost no response. Some years like 2015, where we had a lot of northern corn leaf blight, we saw up to 10 to 15 bushels in the corn on soybeans. So as of right now, we're not seeing a whole lot of activity in the corn on soybean ground. So as of right now, I would tell you to focus your, focus your money on the corn on corn. Um, another thing that we have seen is the higher the yield environment, the better chance we have of a profitable yield response to our fungicide application. So if you have a few fields that look very, very good, you think there's a lot of yield potential there, the fungicide can help protect that yield potential, especially if we stay warm. We know that when we stay 70 degrees or above for nighttime temperatures, there's a lot of nighttime respiration that's going on within our corn plants. The fungicides have proved to help slow that respiration rate down and help increase yield. So just a few things there to keep in mind. Just a couple of the diseases that we are seeing here. If the camera wants to come in just a little bit closer, hopefully we can get these uh, diseases to show up on the camera. But here what you're looking at right now is physoderma. One of the giveaways is you'll see uh, the speckles or the spots in the midrib of the corn plant as well as oftentimes it's very similar on each side of the leaf and the reason for this is physoderma occurs when water sits in the whirl when the corn's about that v6 to v8 stage so it's kind of like a wrapped up piece of paper that you cut snowflakes out of it's it's the same on each side so that's physoderma that's one of the things um, that you might see probably are not going to uh, do any correction with the fungicide but the one thing that we are starting to see here currently is a lot of gray leaf spots starting. And one of the giveaways with gray leaf spot is you have these rectangular lesions and they kind of follow the veins of the corn leaf. So as if we stay hot and humid, it's a very, very conducive environment for a gray leaf spot. So just kind of wanted to give you a heads up on a couple of the diseases that we are seeing. Um, the physoderma really wouldn't worry about it. That infection has taken place and there's nothing we can do about it. However, this gray leaf spot is something on certain hybrids that can be of concern. So again, if you guys have any questions, be sure to contact your local Pioneer sales representative, account manager, or agronomist. Thank you and we'll see you in the fields. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.